We're going to get started. I know there's a couple people that have uh, already called, so they're going to be running out. Um, I want to introduce, my name is Jay Otenti. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Kingston. I want to introduce the, uh, the speakers for tonight's presentation. Chief Anthony Cruz, the Town of Ulster. Sheriff Paul Glenn Larkin, Ulster County Sheriff. Captain Robert Ruzzo from the New York State Police. Town of Ulster Supervisor James Quigley. And DA, Ulster County, Holly Carnton. So, let me give you a little background as to why we're doing this presentation. About a month ago, a month and a half ago, we attended a class that talked about crime statistics and analysis. We discussed the, the relevancy of using that information to the benefit of not only the town, but also to the city. And uh, we've been using crime statistics for some time to try to deploy police officers in places that they need to be. A little bit of, uh, little bit of background on the city of Kingston, uh, for those of you from, from Ulster. Uh, the population is a little under 24,000. About half male population. You can see the census data 2010. On the crime analysis end of it, uh, we, we've actually utilized statistics in record keeping of incidents and crimes. How that's done, I'm going to explain later on. But you can see here on our incidents, these are the main areas of Kingston that warrant the most attention from the police department. These we refer to as incidents. You can see some of them a little bit more concentrated. This information is going to be pertinent and relevant when I cover how we start patrolling and using different strategies to make that happen. Uniform crime reports, the criminal statistics, or crime statistics here. 2012, we closed with 29, over 29,000 calls for service in the city of Kingston. That's a lot. That's a lot of response time. Of that, 21-7 was were the reactive calls, the calls when, hey, I need a cop, and we send a cop your way. The proactive, 7,600. Proactive can be anything. It can be a traffic stop initiated by a police officer, or it could be them coming up on something saying, that doesn't look right, I'm going to stop and talk to this individual, we refer to as a field interview. <laughs> part one crimes. This is what the, the uniform crime reports usually uh, focus on, the part one crimes. There's a number of them. The FBI puts out the information. We collect it and we send it to them. Last year, we had 842 part one crimes. When you see the local papers put in, crime is up, crime is down, they're using the part one crimes to make that determination based on the numbers we submit. The violent crime in Kingston, and there's a number of factors why, is down 25%. That is huge for us, huge. This comes on the, and then again, talking about the strategies, there's a couple of different combinations of why we were successful this year in, in completing this. The property crimes, however, not so much. 33% increase. Now, of the 33% motor vehicles here accounted for quite a bit, 163. And if you look at the percent that were unsecured, 77% of all thefts from motor vehicles were unsecured or unlocked. Gotta lock your cars. Right? That's what the message we've been trying to tell the public for a long, long time. Bicycle thefts, of the bicycle thefts we, we kept track of in 2012, 61% were unsecured, unchained, uncabled. Makes it easy for someone to take that bike and get running with it. Domestic violence calls, 741. I know uh, the district attorney will be talking about domestic violence. I believe that's correct, sir. Yes. Uh, I'll let him elaborate on some of the calls. The detective division investigative cases, we handled 728. And, and the reason I'm putting these numbers up here is to show you what our agency is doing in Kingston. And, and not, this doesn't even include the numbers that, that we're partnered up with with the other agencies involved. This is a lot of work. Arrests, just, under, just over 1,700 people were arrested in Kingston in 2012. That's a lot of cuffing. Intelligence gathering. Some of the things we've changed over the last couple of years is we're actually developing, not only collecting information through crime statistics, but also gathering information on, on, uh, through intelligence, through street interviews and intelligence gathering at the street level. We are very fortunate that we have with us a DCGS certified crime analyst. Shelly Highland is in the back somewhere. There she is. And she's the uh, wizard behind the numbers, uh, her and Ashley. Ranieri are in the back, 
They actually make up the, our crime analysis team in Kingston. What they do is they come in, they take all of our data, and they compile it into numbers that make sense to us. Let's face it, cops aren't accountants. So we're going to use that information to the best ability, and they have the ability to change it from numbers into information we can put on, usually in a mapping format. The software we use is PD Manager. It's a records management system. It allows the officers not only at headquarters, but in the car to enter information at the scene, thereby cutting time back and forth to headquarters to get to a computer system. The mapping software is ArcGIS. Again, I'm going into a little bit of detail here to show you how much work it goes involved in here. But the information is collected in, in our PD Manager software and then transferred through mapping program into, into the maps we can use. For traffic accidents and reporting, uh, all of the agencies, all local agencies use tracks, and that allows us to map any data relative to VAT stops and any time there's an accident in the city of Kingston. The newest approach we've, we've adopted now as of November is DDATS. And you can see here that what we're talking about doing is using location-based traffic stops under the premise that bad guys usually travel back and forth to the scene of a crime, whether it's on foot and that we take care of that on our own in here, or if it's through vehicle stops, we document that. So this information, again, is a way to, to put together maps to put cops where they need to be. And I think the expression on DDAX is cops on dots, and you'll see that we use that principle over and over and over. We do debrief um, as a result of after clean sweep, we've come up with a new form. We're centralizing and collecting information after every arrest. It's important because even though that person may not have been involved in a situation or circumstance or incident that happened three months ago, they may know someone or know something of that incident. And if they know it, usually we're going to try to get them to share it with us. Right? There's a lot of information out there. We get it from arrestees, members of the public, and the field interviews that are conducted every day. We talk about some of these incidents that are being documented. A lot of them do not get marked as an incident on our records because it just takes a few minutes to say, hey, uh, we don't know you, where are you from? That information is collected by the officer, not necessarily as an incident. Information is then given to the detectives, the street crimes unit, and then, it, and then to the patrol officers so they're aware of it. You know, one benefit we have over the last couple of years is the increase uh, use of technology and communication. And I think that really speaks volumes, not only in, in agency, but amongst all the agencies in Ulster County. And you see that that really is a benefit to us. Technology. Uh, it's no surprise that I'm a bit of a geek at heart, and uh, I do like to use technology when I can. As a crime-finding tool, we have the ability to use uh, license plate readers. Uh, in this particular regard, we're talking about devices that collect information via cameras. Right now, most of them are on mobile units or, or units that are on vehicles that drive around the city. The information that's collected is usually the color of the vehicle, the front part of the vehicle, wherever the license plate is, and then the license plate information on it. That in and of itself is, is in a database here that we collect at the county level and at the state level. And what's nice about it is Kingston, Ulster, the state police, the sheriff's office, we all use license plate readers. And that's a big component to collecting data. So the three different ways that we have, we have the fixed mount camera systems that will be uh, installing, I think, relatively shortly the vehicle mounts that are available now, and then we'll have them all throughout the city in a, in a relatively mobile fashion. I don't want to say how we're going to do it, but they'll be out there collecting this information. License plate readers collect it at just over 400 plates a minute. That's a lot of information. So, and again, if officers have information in the computer system, in the car, that that vehicle was stolen or suspended registration, it will send an alert to that officer in the car, and then we can track that vehicle down. When we talk about utilization of fixed mounts, if they're put in places of high thoroughfares, 9W, over the bridge, uh, the interchange, whatever it might be, any vehicle passing through that, that information gets collected, and we can use that data. We can enter it locally. We're looking for car ABC123. That car passes the license plate reader. Then we can send patrols out to recover that vehicle. Or if that vehicle does come up suspended, radio that information to the, to the other jurisdictions. So important technology that we're utilizing now. Mobile data terminals, nothing new. Uh, again, just another form of technology that we're using because it does allow officers to have access in, to uh, 
all the information that they would at headquarters in their vehicles, in their vehicles. Another component to that, both used by officers in the car and in dispatch, are AVLs or auto vehicle locators. Basically, it's a GPS unit in the car. When the cars get out for deployment, we track them. This is the map that we see in our headquarters. And again, because it's, we're connected, all the agencies within Ulster County use this mapping software. The Sheriff's Office, the State Police, the Town of Ulster, the City of Kingston, we see where each other's cars are. And that helps to cut down on the response time when an incident occurs. Again, we can go back and track for dispatch purposes if a vehicle was in that location at a certain time. So what we're doing now is we're compiling the data and looking back. If an incident occurred here at 229, we can tell where our car was. And is that the most efficient place for that officer to be during that time frame if we start to show trending? Video mapping. We took this on, I believe, in February of 2012. This video mapping uh, program is really a door-to-door -door program. We're going to businesses, we're going to, the, to, to neighborhoods, we're knocking on doors, we're asking people, do you have surveillance systems? Do you have video capability at your home or your business? Because that information is, is utilized by us to catch the bad guys. All right? It reduces the time it takes for us to conduct investigations. When the bank robbery took place uptown at M&T Bank, we knew right away where to go to check the cameras to see if there was a possibility. Now, I have to tell you, didn't really pan out for us that time because the cameras didn't catch anybody, but if it had, and we have had two successes last year based on this system. Detectives have a map similar to this. There's little call outs. They circle the area and the, the cameras that are in that area pop up. We immediately know, contact the owners. The owners say, yeah, we have the camera, it's been running. We'll send a detective out there right now to collect the information. If it's an IP-based or internet-based system, we can access it over the, over the internet. And again, important technology for us to utilize. Here's another resource that the community has that we want to be able to use. We've had success on it. This is something we're going to continue to push. Operation Impact. We started uh, as Operation Impact. Impact jurisdiction in New York State is identified of what the state considers to be high crime cities, high crime jurisdictions. Kingston was designated an impact site after Impact 2. Our crime stats compared to other jurisdictions is very low. They look at percentages. These percentages are used by DCJS, the funding source, um, to help out with everything that we're doing in an effort to reduce crime. And one big component of that is not only the reduction of crime, but the reduction of crime through technology and crime stats. And that's why we, we uh, employ these, these policies here. It incorporates the use of strategies. And I'll talk about on monthly meetings and how they're successful. Um, the partnerships that have de been developed, and that's why we're, we're doing this public safety summit together, because this is how things are done, together. It is talking about or using intelligence-based, the crime data has to be timely and accurate. We've changed things over the last two years to make it so that the information is real-time, and it involves a lot of community organizations and groups. We go out there, we knock on doors, we make people uh, aware of what's going on. We have gone door-to-door -door for notifications. Hey, listen, we've had a rash of burglaries, we've had a rash of arsonies. This is what we need you to do in your neighborhood. What they've given us, and last year was just under for the city of Kingston, uh, $80,000, I think, for Ulster County, just over 200. Uh, target area patrols based upon the crime stats. And I'll show you why that map goes, is so important to us. There's equipment that they provide to us, form of technology and training for our crime analysts and our officers. Because again, since I mentioned before, Cops aren't accountants, and there's a small paradigm shift to try to get them on board. Strategy meetings. Ulster <coughs> County District Attorney has a representative, the Town of Ulster, the Sheriff's Office, the State Police, Probation, Corrections and Community Supervision, which uh, used to be New York State Parole, and other state and local agencies. Once a month, we meet at our headquarters, we review the data that's compiled by our crime analysts, and we come up with strategies on how to combat it. The most important result of those meetings are the recommendations at the end. That is the most important because that data, to some degree, is dated. It's a couple of days or a week or two old. We've got to try to stay ahead of it as much as we can. Police and efforts. What we have done, and you'll see here, we used to patrol the city in three sectors, up, <coughs> mid, and down. And when we asked the command staff, why do we do that? And the answer was, 
because we've always done it that way. Well, that doesn't make any sense because if you can see here, this is where the incident data is. This is where the cops need to be. So what we've done is we've changed our patrol map to show a new sectors. You've got sector one, two, three, and four. The lieutenants, the shift lieutenants who are responsible for overseeing their patrol areas now deploy officers and, and uh, additional resources from these two areas and out. So every, er, er, every area has coverage, but these two areas, because they warrant the most attention as far as incidents, are where we're focusing right now. And again, the use of technology can dictate police officers in those proper areas. Increased visibility. Two components we've, been, we've adopted is high visibility and education. Visibility by the cops and education by the community. Lock your doors, lock your, really, please, I can't emphasize enough that we try to push this, this information out all the time. But it's true, visibility is a big key component. I use the example quite often. You're going up the throughway, you might be doing 68 miles an hour in a 65 zone. You look over in the corner and you see a trooper parked in the corner and your foot just does that little bitty jog. That little bitty jog, even though you know 68's not gonna be the, the pullover limit, but you do that little bitty jog and you press back down on it and now you're ending up doing 70 anyway, but the fact is with the increased visibility, that's a key component to us. So what do we do? One of the things we try to do is use single officer cars versus double. We have, in the past, doubled our officers up for safety purposes. We handle, as you notice, over 700 domestic violence calls, and the proper tactical response to that is to put two officers in every car. There's two people normally there at a domestic, well, there should be two officers. Well, what we've done is we split that car up. Now, if we normally have four cars out before, now we have five, we've increased visibility by 20%. If we had six, and now we're going to eight, again, these officers have to coordinate because the zones are, are different than where they were before, but through dispatch and AVL, we're able to make sure that both officers arrive at the same time, another key component. A new color scheme. Um, as you see, most agencies in this area have adopted a black and white or blue and white scheme. They stand out. You see us more. I've had many, many people say to me, wow, how many cops did you hire? They were all over the place. Well, that may be partly true. We did increase to 74 from years past, but the fact of the matter is, this color scheme does stand out. You take notice of these cars as they're going through our jurisdictions. Proactive patrol methods. We assign times now. Before, the lieutenants and the sergeants would give assignments to the officers and they would go out. Now we're giving officers an hour to two hours a day per shift to decide to let them come up with something to do proactively. Those officers are no longer assigned reactive calls for that time period. Tinty, you're, you got the first hour from nine to 10, do something proactive. So essentially, without, unless there's an emergency, I can be left alone to do whatever I deem is proactive. And I have to report that back to the lieutenant who submits a report on a daily basis at the end of his shift to the command staff for review, and everybody gets that information. So it makes a lot more sense to share. Walking posts, high visibility walking posts. People wanted it, we're doing it now. When? Whenever we can whenever we can. We've had requests from uptown businesses during the day, midtown businesses during the day, downtown businesses at night. We're trying to do that. The parks. I know initially at the beginning of the year we had some concerns about parks in, in Kingston. I can tell you the midnight shift is phenomenal. The officers on the midnight shift are always checking the parks and it makes a big difference. Bike patrols. These two officers are our school resource officers, Johnny Curtis and Chris Holbert. They're assigned to, to Kingston High School and when they're not in the schools, they're on bikes. We just ran two courses, two bike courses this year uh, in-house. You may have seen them biking, uh, pedaling through Kingston. There was a number of officers that went through the school. We have the equipment. A lot of it was purchased through Operation Impact Funding. We're going to be utilizing it. So again, high visibility to some degree, but more importantly, community interaction. And that's what we're, we're striving for. Investigative strategies. Another component that we're trying to push now is a special investigations unit. We, we uh, started using our detectives more for street crimes and undercover operations. The special assignments that I mentioned here, what we've done is utilize our internal manpower, scheduling it different. Now we have two officers every day, two police officers, patrol officers, assigned to work with detectives in SIU every day. 
365 days a year. Whether or not detectives are working, we'll have two plainclothes officers assigned to them for a seven day run each time. So the officers come off their days off, they work the seven days, and they go back on their days off. For seven days, we have two officers working together with street crime team. They've been very effective. If you follow us on Facebook, you'll see that there's quite a few arrests being made every day. Information intelligence-led approach. The debriefings I talked about before, this information is posted on the whiteboard in SIU, and again, it's being disseminated out to the people that need it. Do you know this person? We had it today. Emails went out. We just had this happen. Get to be on the lookout for this person. So it makes a lot of, even officers that are off duty will contact us and say, hey, I just saw this guy. He's in the Hudson Valley Mall. No, nobody's in the Hudson Valley Mall. No, no bad guys. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the success of working together, right? Partnerships in law enforcement. That's the success we've had in Kingston. Operation Clean Sweep spoke of that in volumes. Working with the state police, the sheriff's office, the DA, the town of Ulster. I mean, all of us working together really made a big, huge difference. Over 100 arrests, all the indictments, I, I think you'll speak on that to some degree, Helen. <clears throat> we followed that up, and uh, again, this wasn't publicized at the time, but since this was no, we call this clean sweep, we call this last one dustpan. And I think that uh, it was kind of fitting. Um, it was a smaller amount, certainly internal, but again, you know, we're talking about cleaning up. This is the stuff that we're doing. We make the undercover buys. I know some people have called my office and said, why don't you do something about this, Chief? And I'll say, we'll try, thank you for calling, be patient. My real answer wants to be, and I'm not gonna say it is, we're working on it, watch the news. So, just because you don't see it happening, doesn't mean we're not doing something about it. Keep that in mind. Effective initiatives. New York State Police, and I'll let uh, Captain Nuzo speak to this, to this on some degree. We have them come into the city. What's nice about the, the monthly meetings, that information is transferred to the other agencies, and they utilize that to help us reduce incidents in Kingston. A sheriff's office comes in, ATV patrols, canine assistance, and the technology. They are the techno technological leader in Ulster County when, it talks, when they're talking about unifying law enforcement. District Attorney's Office, again, the use of technology and case management. Everything we do, everything they do, everything we do goes to them. They prosecute the cases, so we, we work very closely with them. And our impact patrols, again, are very directed, boots on the ground type of, appro of approach. This is where they gotta be, this is where we're putting them. At this time, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to uh, Chief Anthony Cruz.